saw Paul uh, Babcock speak on some electrocoagulation yesterday, and as you know, he's uh, local here in the Spokane area and uh, have known him for quite a while. He's spoken at every presentation, and it was actually uh, after Peter had an MWO, and then uh, it impressed Paul so much that he built one, and we watched Paul with that MWO for, I don't know, probably about two years or something like that, just kind of seeing the experiments he was doing, measuring the spark gap growth, and and you know we experimented with it and sat in it and and uh, that went on for a couple years before we even decided to go into production with the uh, the real uh, MWOs. And as you know, you know I kind of covered a little bit about you know Earth ionosphere connection, some of the seed stuff with electricity, the MWO with electricity, and that's really kind of uh, the focus of uh, this particular presentation on beneficial beneficial field technology, is kind of keeping on that similar path of electricity, life, they just go hand in hand. So help welcome uh, Paul Babcock. Thank you. We're electric beings. We live in an electric field. We actually have two bodies. We have sensing systems. And so this little thing that started out with an MWO that I thought was just for me and my own health turned into this understanding that I think is probably the most important subject that I've ever come across and how it all crystallized and what it means and the theory, the electrical theory and the Tesla's radiant field mechanism that we all live within is probably the number one subject that all of us really need to focus on. So the term beneficial field technology came about years of studying and experimenting with all kinds of devices, passive and active. Most of them were like the Lukowski machine, they were created for other purposes, you know, by other, by other innovators for purposes of eliminating disease, improving physical vitality and health for humans, plants, and animals. And in the beginning of this journey, I thought it was all for me. So. I turned myself into a test bed. <laughs> and so did some other people. They used me as their test bed. And the one thing I came across, and thank God to the spiritual aspects I've always lived by and the guidance, spiritual guidance I've got that gave me a different aspect, is I realized nobody can understand this stuff. I don't, I can't take my oscilloscope to it. I can't test it. I can't use instrumentations to define any of this stuff the way it really works. And, and then I went back to what I really knew from a very young age, is that we are scientific instruments. And the only instrument I was going to be able to use to understand this stuff was me. Here's my backyard. We're going to show how I learned all this stuff. So right here is my MWO. I got seams of quartzite. So here I live on a granite rock. I lived on this rock for 20 years. Everybody that knows me has been there and sees this, but this is the Spokane Valley. This was buried under four or 500 feet of lava rock for about 20 million years. And then the great Missoula Fuds came along and they carved out, they carved out the uh, Spokane Valley and left this exposed. And now I live on it. And the MWO is sitting right in here. And it is tied to this rock quartz structure. And I found that the MWO is highly interactive with the Earth's atmosphere electrical system. That's why it works. Because I can see the effects when they happen. That's how I know it. There isn't a camera that can take a picture of it. And I wish I had an instrument that I could take pictures of it for you. But that doesn't do it. And so. Just like the stones of Karnak and the pyramids, I'm basically living on a quartz pyramid and I've got a beneficial field generator hooked up to it. And trust me, it works. Everybody knows discoveries about supposedly there's ancient pyramids all over the place. The government goes and digs them up, doesn't tell anybody. So the one that was discovered in Alaska in the 80s, I heard that in the rumor mill I mean, every third person is a military person in Alaska, so the rumors 
you know, that leak out are pretty intense. And so as I'm talking, they says, yeah, that pyramid's real. And they, they blew it up. And I'm like, well, why would they do that? A total mystery to me. Oh, no, they, don't, they destroyed the functioning of these things when they find them. And I'm going, oh, that's stupid. Well, now the answer to me is quite plain. If you want to take over the life force generating mechanism of the Earth, and there's an ancient life force generating stabilizer an enhancement system built that's already still functioning partially, you got to destroy it if you want to take over, right? And then here, so here we put the essential energy light tower in it. Now with this thing, it's probably one of the most powerful things I come across and you look at it and you go, it's, it's, it's plates of stainless steel. I still don't understand the technology, but I know what it does. So, Another bad thing we have in our atmosphere is RF. The higher the frequency, the worst. Why do you think they want 5G? Because they want to control the life force generating mechanism, that electrical me me mechanism of the atmosphere. 5G interrupts it, the biophotonic system interrupts it radically. So what this thing does is it, it provide, puts the coherence back to the field, that's a theory. So, when you put this thing in a space, it conditions the space around it and restores the actual biophotonic process the way it's supposed to work. It takes the electromagnetic effects right out of it, and it works. And when you put this thing in an MWO, watch out. But it depends on the day, and this is where I learned about solar alignments and new moons affect the electrical process of the Earth. Water is a big Oregon battery. That's why the underground aquifers. I realized, gee, draining out the aquifers is not a real wise thing to do because they're part of the electrical process of the earth. They're part of the Oregon life force generating mechanism. So <clears throat> to the future, that's why we're back to Eden. So now that we know this, we get our sensory perception back. You know, we've been basically meat puppets, and there was a reason for that, because it made us learn. It made us look at it from a different perspective. We wanted to be a technological society. We have reasons why we created technology and explored that three-dimensional way. But now we're to the level to where we're back to the garden, and we incorporate this knowledge. What do you think we can do with our next civilization? And that, to me, is we don't have to be a pyramid. So. It's tools of the mouse army. It's our, basically our weapons of peace. And so what we do, worldwide implementation of this simple technology around the world will actually help do exactly what the ancients did and stabilize and enforce and improve this life-generating mechanism. So if we're all living in, a, in real high levels of biofield energy, What's that do for your health, your longevity, the workings of your mind? All our issues get fixed. It's a fundamental precept of ancient civilizations is you turned it into a garden before you moved into it. And we are fully capable of doing that. And we don't have to ask permission because we don't need nuclear power plants. This is simple technology. The light tower, and I'll testify this from having personal experiences, there's no way I can measure it with an instrument and write you a white paper and see here's my proof. But I can tell you it conditions miles around it and there's more and more of that evidence coming. Crops grow better. Everything does better. An incredibly powerful technology and penny. Same with the MWO. Proper implementation of this technology around the world is going to where you're living. If you do it, you're going to be living in an enhanced environment where chromosomal life thrives.